I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Today I would like to start this video series about Vector Network Analyzers or VNAs. I was going to do this all in a single video but I realized that it would end up being way too long. So I have broken up this topic into a series of six videos. In this first video I want to talk about what is a Vector Network Analyzer, or VNA, and the advantages of using a VNA for making measurements? In the second video, I will answer what kinds of things can they measure with a VNA. In the third, I want to talk about terminology. In other words, terms that you need to know if you're going to use your VNA effectively. Then the fourth one is single port calibration and measurement using your VNA, including how to do a port extension. The fifth one is two port calibration and measurement using your VNA. And then the sixth one are the differences between the high end VNAs and the more affordable cousins. So this first video is your introduction to VNAs and answers the question, what exactly is a VNA and why should I care to use it? If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel to receive notifications when new videos come out. Now, vector network analyzers used to be overwhelmingly expensive instruments to own. They would cost tens of thousands of dollars to buy new and they were also very heavy and large well, a, a two-man lift, if you will. But with the, the advent of the microprocessor and surface mount technology and so on, it became possible to create VNAs much more cheaply and compactly. This kind of started with the mini VNA Tiny and other such devices. These were still several hundred dollars. Well, now we have the Nano VNA and its more recent cousins for under $100. Some you can even buy from Walmart, of all things. But one thing that I have consistently heard from folks who have bought one of these devices is the question, okay, now I own a VNA. Well, how do I use it and what is it good for? The purpose of this video series is to answer this very question. Now, I'm not going to try to explain exactly how to use your particular version unless you have one like mine. I plan on using the Mini VNA Tiny in my demonstrations, as well as showing how to use the higher end VNAs as well. So, let's begin with answering the question, what is a vector network analyzer? So what is a vector network analyzer? Well, first let's properly parse out the name, vector network analyzer. It is a vector network analyzer. So to begin with, it is a network analyzer. Now, not a network as in the ethernet or the internet or CBS or NBC, but a network in the electronic sense, which is, which refers to a system of interconnected electronic components. Now, this system of interconnected electronic components has one or more ports. These ports could be inputs or outputs. So the network analyzer treats this network as kind of a black box, which is accessible only through its ports or connectors to the outside world. The network analyzer accesses this network through the network's ports and analyzes what it looks like from an electronic perspective. So it looks in through our little peekaboo hole in through the ports and sees what they, what's inside and analyzes it in terms of what it can see from these ports. Now, there's also the word vector in the name. And the word vector implies that this analyzer evaluates not just the amplitudes of the response, but also the phase angle of those responses. 
So what is this vector business? Well, with capacitive reactants being at minus 90 degrees and inductive reactants being at plus 90 degrees and resistance being at zero degrees, combinations of these components will have phases that are somewhere in between these values. Now, in the RF world, the phase of a network can be represented by a vector on the real imaginary Cartesian coordinate planes. So here we have the Cartesian coordinate plane. We have plus J, the plus imaginary, where we, where we plot inductive reactants. We have the minus imaginary down here, where we plot the capacitive reactants. And we have the horizontal axis, which is the real axis where we plot the, the pure resistance. Now, let's consider the example of a resistor and an inductor in series. It's a very simple network. We have one single port, we have a resistor, we have an inductor. Now, the inductive reactance of an inductor is frequency dependent. So that means that we have to analyze this combination at a particular frequency, let's call it F1, just for giggles. Now, the inductive reactance, X sub L, is going to be equal to J times 2 times pi times the frequency in question times the inductance in Henry's. This is frequency in Hertz, this is inductance in Henry's. And so we have this in series with each other here. And so the overall impedance of that, of this network would be the resistance plus the inductive reactance. And that equals R plus J two pi F L. And so we have a real part and we have an imaginary part. Now, let's just say for giggles that our resistor is 100 ohms and our inductor is 10 micro henrys, which is 10 times 10 to the minus six henrys because this has to be in henrys. And we are interested with F1 equal 1 megahertz, which is 1 times 10 to the 6th hertz, because this has to be in hertz. So then what do we end up with? Well, we end up with the impedance of this is going to equal the resistance, 100 ohms, plus J times 2 times pi times the frequency, which is one times 10 to the sixth hertz times the inductance in Henry's, which is 10 times 10 to the minus six. And so what we end up with is 100 plus J 68.2. And that is the Impedance, notice that this has a real part and it has an imaginary part. Now, what do we do with this real and imaginary part? Well, we're talking about vectors. The impedance is represented by a vector on this plane. So how do we get that vector out of this? Well, we come out here and we plot our resistance on this, plane, on this axis. We go out 100 out this way, and then this is a plus J68.2, so we come up here to 68.2 for the inductive reactants. Now, getting our vector, what we're going to do is we're gonna draw a little dotted line over this way. We're gonna draw a little dotted line down this way and that gives us a place where they meet right here. And the vector is that line that goes from the origin out to the point where those two lines meet. And it turns out 
that the length of that line, notice this is a right triangle. And so you can use simple trigonometry to determine the length of this hypotenuse of the triangle, and it's 118.1 ohms is the magnitude. And then using simple trigonometry, we know that this is about 32 degrees. And so the vector network analyzer will look in here and it will be able to see that this network has an impedance of 118.1 ohms at an angle of 32 degrees or it will report this for you nice and neat and simple 100 plus J68.2. But the VNA will instead of just a single point like we did here at one megahertz, the VNA will be able to scan across a series of frequencies and then report the results across the range. And then you go in and say, okay, well, I'm only interested in what it's doing at one megahertz. So you look at the range and you look at that particular one and you can see it. Now, a two port VNA can analyze a network up to two ports at a time. So we could turn this into a two port device by just simply creating a port two here. So now we have, we have a, a port over here and we could hook up our vector network analyzer, one of our ports to this side, one of our ports to this side, and not only be able to look in this direction to see what this looks like, but we can look in look at to see the response through this device as well. So we can determine the gain or the loss of a particular device doing it this way. So what advantage do we have to using a VNA over other particular methods of measuring things like this? Well, everything has some kind of electronic signature. When you make a measurement using a cable to connect your test instrument to the unit under test, the cable can affect that measurement, especially if you're measuring something involving impedance. Now think of it, your cable is essentially a transmission line between the thing you're testing and your test instrument. And as you move along a cable, as you move along a transmission line, the complex impedance actually changes along the way. So here's a case in point. A transmission line that is a quarter wavelength at a particular frequency is often used as an impedance transformation device. If it is shorted at one end, it looks like an open at the other. If it is open at one end, it looks like it's shorted at the other. So if you're measuring the impedance of a device, connecting your test instrument by way of a cable, you're just going to get the wrong answer because you're going to see the transformed impedance as it goes through your cable. So what does the VNA do for you? Well, the VNA has the advantage over other methods of measurement because it has the ability to simply make the interconnecting cable go away in the measurement. So how does it do that? Well, when you're going to use the VNA for measuring something, you go through a calibration procedure using the interconnecting cables. The VNA then takes your interconnecting cables and looks out through the interconnecting cable at the calibration standards. Now it makes certain assumptions about the calibration standards you're using, but it's looking out there and it sees the effects of the cable on what it expects to be at the end where you have your calibration standard. And so when you make your measurement of the device under test, the VNA simply backs out the effects of the cables from what it's measuring. As a result, all you see is the device under test. 
you don't see the cable in that measurement. Pretty cool, huh? So, VNAs are a great way to, to measure things and to do it accurately. So in this video, I explained what a VNA is and what advantage it has over measurement methods. The next video in this series will tell you about various measurements you can make using a VNA. And then there will be more videos to follow, which includes the terminology, you know, the terms you need to know to help you use your VNA effectively. I will talk about single port calibration and measurements, including how to do a port extension. I will do another video on two port calibration and measurement. And then finally, the differences between the high-end VNAs and their more affordable cousins. If you have found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to this channel so you'll be notified when new videos come out. In the meanwhile, thanks so much for watching. Toodaloots.